and another release by Fedora. This is version 36 and we'll be testing things out today so we can take a look around at what's new and review Fedora. First, you're welcomed as normal by a system tour that you can take. And one thing you'll notice is GNOME 42, the default desktop here in Fedora has been of course updated to version 42. So we get a few things with that. All right, great onboarding process. Let's check things out in this fresh installation. I first want to explore some of the GNOME 42 updates. So the first thing is if you go to your settings and you check out appearance, you'll notice a light and a dark mode. Now this isn't something new, but what is new is now there's a more cohesive experience because some of the applications in GNOME and some system wide escaped the dark theme in the past. Now when you set dark, it should be truly dark and cohesive across the system, across the applications, a great thing to see and finally have. So I'm going to set the dark theme for now so we can check things out. I'll mention right away that those of you who use proprietary NVIDIA drivers now will use Wayland by default because it's being selected by the GNOME Display Manager. Now, if we explore the desktop environment a little bit, not much has changed. Of course, the background here has a beautiful landscape, which looks like a little bit of a waterfall almost with some fish swimming in the background. And it looks much like a painting someone painted. Anyways, in the top left-hand corner, we have activities that gets you to the virtual workspaces right in the middle of the screen. If you have things launched, like I'm going to launch Firefox and maybe the calendar here, which you'll notice with multiple applications opened up, notice the smooth dark theme and everything, but if we hit activities again, now we have these two workspaces. You can easily drag and drop applications between your virtual workspaces. Make sure you know that. Also, if you start getting more virtual workspaces, you'll see them up here in these little squares as well. So you can easily toggle between. Know that you can also take these little applications and move them around your virtual desktops or workspaces as well. Just something to be aware of. You can also start a new one if you just drag in between a session. So for example, now when this one goes away, I introduce a new virtual workstation. Very easy to do. I love using these. In activities at the top, you can search for anything on the system. So let's say we're looking for settings. You type it in and it gives you anything and everything that has to do with settings on the system. On the bottom, one of my most favorite things is the new dock that was introduced with GNOME 40 which sits here at the bottom, very modern, and a few things here by default, Firefox, their default web browser, calendar from GNOME, the file manager from GNOME, and the software center. We'll check out the software center real quick just to make sure nothing has been updated in here and it looks much the same. Nothing new here. Let's exit out of a few of these and continue on. To the right of the software center, we have show applications to show us everything on the system. Again, you have a search bar up top. We've already used it, you know how. You can also start applications in the background by just dragging and dropping them onto your virtual spaces, or of course, just by clicking on them. If you have more than one page of applications, you can scroll through them by simply dragging the screen from right to left. At the bottom, now that we've opened a couple things, of course, they've been pinned to the bottom, showing you that they're open. Just your basic tools here. This is Fedora Workstation that I'm testing with today which includes a lot of the GNOME applications, boxes being one of them, which is kind of surprising to me. Typically you would install this by yourself, but now GNOME boxes is coming here standard, it looks like in Fedora, which is pretty cool in my opinion. It's a great tool to run virtual machines on. Make sure to check it out if you're interested. In the top middle, we have the current date and time, any notifications of the system, as well as a do not disturb button if you don't want to be disturbed by those notifications. To the right of that, we have the current date and a calendar where you can see your events on. On the furthest right-hand side, we have icons that get you to volume control, a wired or wireless connection settings, balance power, which allows you to switch your power settings. Comes in handy whenever you have a laptop. Then you have settings, locking your screen, and powering off, logging out, or suspending the current system. If you right click, you have options to change the background, change your display settings, or just get to regular old settings. One other mention is LXQt desktop environment has an upstream 1.0 release in Fedora 36. You can install that with your existing desktop environment if you want. Of course, a whole bunch of packages and libraries have been updated for this release, and you can get this in a workstation edition, server edition, internet of things edition, or IOT, 
CoreOS Stream Edition, and there are various other spins for ARM devices and even Raspberry Pi. Whenever installing updates, it does remind me a little bit about Windows because it asks you whether or not you want to perform the updates after you restart or power down your computer. And then on next power up, it installs those updates that it has queued up and you can't really use the system until it's done. For those of you who use Fedora, you might be used to this, but others might want to take this into consideration whenever testing out Fedora. It's something other distributions don't quite do. Are you ready to start learning about Linux today? Check out my Linux checklist and cheat sheet at learn.savvynick.com. There's a link below. On the login screen, just notice at the bottom there is a cog that you can select and go between the various different GNOME versions, including the one for Xorg or Wayland. The logins remain the same. But now that we have a fresh system reboot, let's check out the current system resource usage. I'm going to check things out by using HTOP. So starting things out fresh, a little on the heavy side, this GNOME 42 releases. I know this has been down to around 800 gigs. So I'm a little surprised to see it at 1.15 gigs out of 8 gigs of memory. Not sure what's going on with that. We have between 0 and 2% running on the CPUs, 130 tasks, 303 threads, 103 kernel threads, and the uptime is 2 minutes. No swap being used and a ton of processes in the background. One thing that I will say is that we should be expecting a little bit better performance from our GNOME applications since they've been updated to the latest version of GTK, which should give us a performance boost. One revamped tool is the screenshot tool. So if you take a screenshot on your system, you'll notice now you have this new UI for the screenshot tool. You can do a selection, a full screen screenshot, or a windowed screenshot. Of course, if you have windows open, select between recording and just taking a snip of the screen. You'll also notice if you include the tool itself in the screenshot that it won't actually put it in the screenshot. It's smart enough to hide it. I really do like the look and feel of that tool. And let's finally talk about the system settings. Running NeoFetch here, we have Fedora 36 Workstation Edition. Running kernel 5.17, we have 1,778 source packages. This is running Bash 5.1 with desktop GNOME 42. The window theme here is Iowata, so is the icon theme. This is being emulated on an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X series. Currently, we're using 1.3 gigabytes of RAM out of a total of 8 gigs. Not a whole lot has changed here, but there has been quality of life improvements. Are you planning on updating to Fedora 36? Let me know in the comments section below. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.